All right, hopefully everybody can hear us. Ivan, can you hear me? Loud and clear, man. Can you right hear? Okay, so for those watching us on YouTube, nice to see you. Subscribe to our channel. Make sure to click on that button on the right. For all those joining us on our website, welcome to our first webinar. And hopefully everything will work out fine. So I have with me <laughs> Ivan Rosic from Ensoft, who I would like to ask to introduce himself and tell us a bit about his company. All right, Zoltan, thank you, first of all, for having me and thank all of you for joining in. Uh, I got to tell you straight off the bat that I like this concept a lot better. I've attended more than a few webinars in the last couple of weeks. I mean, it tends to happen with the lockdown. There's not a lot, a lot not, there's not a lot of places you can go so you can just attend webinars, but most of them are like presentation focused, not a lot of faces that you can see, only talk. So uh, I like the fact that, you know, we're actually seeing each other. And I love, love your baseball cap as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, uh, guys, uh, my name is Ivan. I'm the SVP of Sales and Business Development here at Ensoft. I've been with the company for almost four years now. Um, before that, I used to work for, I used to be a business development manager for different companies across the globe, spend a lot of time in Asia as well. Uh, so basically, uh, with Ensoft nowadays, uh, in these last four years, uh, we have seen enormous growth um, in all kinds of different areas. Uh, and because of this industry being so vivid and so unusual and so rapidly growing, uh, the excitement is there, you know, you don't even have to look for it. So uh, before we head off, I'm going to give you a small recap of what, what is Ensoft and what it does. I'm going to turn on my share screen and show you a presentation. It's only like 500 slides, so it should be done for <laughs> I'm kidding, it's like only four slides. I'm not gonna kill you with presentations. All right. Basically, um, just a couple of facts about Ensoft. Um, the company was founded in 2008 by Igor, uh, who is still the uh, majority share owner and the CEO of the company. Uh, back then, we had only a couple of employees, but nowadays we have more than 300 employees uh, worldwide. Uh, we had more than 1.9 billion tickets uh, processed to our platform last year. Uh, and we have at the moment more than 120 customers on 32 different markets. So basically, uh, this is who we are in an essence. Uh, but the more interesting stuff is what we do. Uh, so, Ensoft in its core started off with virtual games back in the days, but we have grown since. Um, now it's more than 10 years that we are on the market and we have been serving customers all over the globe. And we have these three, let's say, separate uh, product uh, groups that we focus on. The first one is Sportsbook. So, we offer a, a Sportsbook platform for uh, all the operators that are already existing on the market or the new ones, new entries which is truly and, and profoundly omnichannel. So we actually do support all four channels uh, and we uh, kind of segment this part into three different products. The first one is live betting or in-play betting, which is based out of uh, Sporator's MTS. Uh, and it's uh, working beautifully uh, in a lot of markets across the globe. I think we have more than 60 clients using this solution at the moment. Uh, and most of them uh, are using it in retail. Uh, Apart from the live betting, we have pre-match and pre-match we have the MTS-based solution and we have a so-called self-managed solution, which is a unique solution based for operators, um, bigger operators that have their own, that want to handle their own risk uh, and that have their own dedicated team of bookies, uh, you know, ready to take over the, 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 the wheel, let's say, of the whole uh, company. Now, while we done this last, product is because we believe that most of the betting operators are out there ha are working on applications for, for pre-match that are really out of date. So the, the uh, applications that they're using uh, might have really useful stuff, but they've been developed like 10, 15 years ago in average that we've seen. And we decided, you know, why, why not revolutionize that part and offer something completely different to, to the guys that matter the most in this business, in my personal opinion. So 
this is the sportsbook part. Uh, and uh, in terms of the virtual games, we have two segments. First one is virtual sports betting. Uh, in this category, we put uh, our racing games that are done in-house uh, by our uh, graphics team. So basically, we have our virtual course races, virtual motorcycle speedway, virtual greyhound races, uh, all these different games that are racing based. And we have also Sporadar's virtual sports. Uh, of course, Sporadar being uh, you know, the shareholder in Ensoft, it makes sense that we can offer their virtuals as well. But being a platform provider uh, means that we also have integration of uh, you know, providers like Fermantia, Inspired, and uh, others in this business. And uh, last but definitely not least are the draw-based games, uh, which is our kind of uh, unique uh, unique strength in the market. Um, basically, those are the lucky sixes, lucky Xs, and uh, next sixes of the world. So basically, we have about six different uh, number-based games uh, that are available across the channels, and they have been performing brilliantly. I mean, basically, uh, lucky sixes are, you know, original product so to say you know uh, back in the days back in 2008 when Incor and a couple of other guys just started the company this was the first product the first actual game that we provided to our uh, customers and it made such a big success in the balkans areas in Bal balkan balkans area that we actually had uh, a fairly easy job of presenting this and, and supplying it to operators worldwide um uh, on the right side of the screen, uh, you can see a couple of uh, information on what we do. So our platform and our applications are running on uh, more than 10,000 different uh, shops at any given moment, except these last month or so. <laughs> so basically, our forte has always been retail uh, through device management, through platform features that we offer, through basically the seamless uh, installation of the uh, applications and the games themselves in the retail. We have been uh, pioneering the market in different kinds of features that uh, others have, you know, successfully embedded in their businesses as well. But uh, basically, we have always prided ourselves on, on our retail kind of footprint. Unfortunately, these days, um, a majority of our customers are struggling because a lot of them have their retail presence. Not all of them have an online. So basically, we have done uh, a lot from our side that to try, try to help them with this migration and try to give them as much resources as they can uh, need at this point to, to, to make that transition as, as smooth as possible. But, you know, I'm sure everybody's well aware that, you know, it's not really easy to get out of this situation if you're very much retail uh, tight. So basically the virtuals uh, growth in 2000, oh, the SSBTs. Uh, we have launched the SSBT channel, uh, basically, I think it was three years ago. Um, and we have grown well over 5,000 devices worldwide, um, which is brilliant because a lot of them are using also virtuals uh, on them as well, not only the sports betting, and they have been performing brilliantly. This is uh, part of the reason why we also have our uh, sister company called Stark, which is uh, in the business of producing hardware. Uh, devices and of course uh, you know we work with different companies around the, the industry and uh, Stark is actually supplying cabinets and, and SSBTs hardware for many different companies and many different platform providers so if you have your own platform provider or you know basically if you have your own in-house platform uh, there is no need uh, to go directly to Ensoft to actually uh, get in touch with Stark. Uh, the virtual growth this is basically uh, Turnover, uh, so we have grew 24% in terms of the virtual sports and draw-based games comparing to 2018. And we saw a pretty uh, strong growth in Sportsbook uh, in 2019, which was 41%. Now the tickets growth in total was uh, 15%, which means that you know the average pay in per ticket has been performing exceptionally well. So we, I, I told you uh, who we are and uh, what we do. And uh, lastly, I just want to you know, give you a glimpse of uh, who do we work with. So these are some of the examples of the clients that are working with us nowadays. Uh, basically, pretty much all of them have their online presence, so you can check it out as well. Uh, you can see the games there uh, running and, and basically performing as well. Uh, but this is just, you know, part of our customer base. As I mentioned in the first slide, there's more than 120 clients worldwide. Um, and 
basically we work from you know the the some clients in Sri Lanka all the way to you know Latin America and then basically Haiti. I think Haiti actually long, we launched a couple of clients there as well quite recently. So basically, uh, not all of them can fit uh, this slide as much as I would love to, but uh, this is just a glimpse for you guys to see who our references really are. And um, basically, which brings us uh, to to the topic itself. And I gotta say that. Uh, Basically, the, the whole segment of, of virtuals has exploded in the, in the in the last month or so after the whole lockdown and after the sports started evaporating basically from all the offers. Uh, different operators have tried to struggle with it on different ways. We've seen growth of esports. We've seen the growth of um, simulated leagues. We've seen the growth of uh, table tennis in Ukraine and then Belarus league which were the only uh, sport competitions left out there uh, but uh, more than anything else i think this has been a time of tremendous interest and growth of virtual sports now when you think of virtual sports you think of virtual football virtual basketball boxing whatever it is uh, but basically what a lot of operators are kind of you know uh, letting slide is the number based virtual games uh, which uh, are a perfect way to 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 tie up uh, your audience online because most of the operators out there have their sportsbook business and they have their casino business on the same side preferably uh virtuals have always been the bridge between those two segments and between these two types of players uh and uh, i'm fully confident when i say that virtual sports such as virtual football virtual basketball virtual tennis uh, virtual racing of any sorts is much closer to the sportsbook section and the number based virtuals are much closer to the casino segment so uh if you really want to tie the, these audiences together and, and bring them basically transfer the casino audience onto the sportsbook you're missing this little small piece of the bridge uh which for in my opinion are the virtual uh, games based on numbers um i'm not going to spend too much time talking about the performance of the games you've seen the references of uh, companies we work with uh we can send you a couple of examples uh, if you reach out to us after this webinar but uh, i just want to show you how it looks like on the web because i think you know it, it tells a much more better it shows a much better picture than than uh, if we just you know talk about it yeah so, hopefully the internet will not crack now <laughs> yeah how how long did it crack for <laughs> One second. All right. I hope everybody can see it. So basically, um, I'm going to show you only like a six uh, because I don't want to, you know, burn you too much with the whole demonstration. So this is a fairly simple game. Um, it's a six out of 48 bingo style virtual game. Uh, basically, uh, you pick six uh, different balls uh, out of 35 that are drawn. And basically, you bet your chances that you're going to win something. Uh, basically, the the odds that you see on the screen, uh, from starting from ten thousand downwards, are basically the odds that you're going to be getting that are going to be multiplied by the stake that you put in. And the rules are simple: if I if I, if I have chosen twenty four, forty four, thirty five, twenty six, and eleven, and then my sixth number was twenty eight, uh, I would have been uh, I would have had a winning ticket. Uh, where my stake will be multiplied by 10,000, which is fairly, uh, fairly simple. So basically, this is how it looks like on the web. This is our demo site. Um, basically, feel free to reach out. We can set up a demo account, demo player account for you as well. Uh, but I want to show you how it looks like for the players themselves. This is the visualization that they get during this round. And you can see the round number here in the upper right corner. They can still place bets. And the most kind of popular uh, choice is the random. Uh, kind of generator. So basically, random gives you six random numbers uh, out of the bunch that you can just freely, you know, drill with until you <laughs> reach that fine spot that you're looking for. After you add the bet, you have the bet slip here, you click pay in, and voila, you're basically set. Um, you can see all the tickets, uh, the history of the tickets here, uh, and track the progress. And basically, what happens now is that this ticket that we just played is for round the next round that's starting basically after this one finalizes. Now, it's a really simple game. It has done 
tremendous, tremendously in the retail. Um, I can tell you in some of our prime markets um, that we started about 10 years ago, started working in 10, 10 years ago. Um, operators, couple of operators that are performing uh, the best in the top five percentile of, uh, of the performance in the market are basically uh, basing their business on, on, on this virtual game, which is very odd for retail business. I haven't seen it in a lot of markets, but basically uh, more than 80% of their turnover in retail is coming through this game. And I'm talking about a retailer that has like 700 plus shops. So uh, it took it, it takes a bit of time for the players to, to get used to the game, but once they do, it's uh, very, very uh, uh, interesting to them and they like to, to return to it and they have loved it in retail. And now the transition to online has been in the focus more than ever. Um, we have also been working on improvising or improving the game as well uh, for the online. So basically, I cannot share all the details with you, but uh, basically, we have been working with uh, our existing clients. Uh, and if some of our clients are now listening to this webinar, if our uh, sales managers have not been in touch with you, there will be probably shortly because we've done some maybe testing in these last four weeks. And I think and I think we managed to make some progress in terms of how the games are reacting uh, on the odd line, which means in, in reality, in, in numbers, it means that we have managed to successfully lift uh, the, the the number of tickets by 70%, and uh, the average pay-in has uh, risen 20% due to these kind of uh, measures that we're taking. So basically, uh, this is this is it. I mean, uh, talking about uh, how the number-based games can benefit your business uh, is topic that can be done for hours but i didn't want to bother you with too much details i wanted to be straight to the point and show you what we actually uh, are doing right now and who is basically collaborating with us so uh in this period of, of, of uh, lockdown i would say uh, we have done quite a few efforts to try to help out our existing clients and try to see if we can help some other operators that were not working with us before uh, the most prominent of those um, basically measures was uh, the two months for free on all virtuals online. Uh, this means that we have given um, basically April and May completely free of charge for all the operators uh, that are using our virtuals online, either existing ones or you know potential ones. Uh, the response from you know, the community was really great, and we saw. Uh, I even saw what surprised me the most is that we actually got a lot of interest from casino-oriented, purely casino-oriented websites uh, that don't even have a sports book uh, on their site that are interested in, in, in the virtual. So I think the virtuals kind of hype has been reaching, you know, depths that I wasn't even imagining. So, but um, honestly, like, uh, and, and one more example that I can maybe uh, put forth is that uh, we've launched our European and American roulette in retail about, I would say, five months ago, maybe not even that. Uh, and we've seen, you know, really good success, especially in, in certain markets like Haiti. We've seen some success in uh, Romania as well. We've seen some success in other uh, markets, but um, we have not developed it for the online before this crisis started. Uh, but what the guys did, the product guys actually got together. They saw a lot of interest from our current clients, current partners, uh, to have the product online as well. They actually did an internal hackathon, which lasted for about three three days straight. Uh, of course, everybody's located, you know, in their own homes, but they managed to finish, uh, you know, amount of work that's usually done uh, in three weeks, basically. Uh, they had help from other departments as well, and we brought the product to. Uh, production uh, with development and QA tests in a matter of, I think, two or three weeks, which is incredible when you think about it. Uh, and now we are releasing, I think this week, we are releasing the first of our clients uh, with this product online. So this is, for me, was the, the, the most important part of the story that I usually lead with uh, either, you know, our partners, our betting operators that are B2C focused or basically aggregators of content or platforms that want to add new content for their clients. Uh, of course, you want to bridge uh, 
the, 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 the casino audience with your sports book, basically. And you cannot do that unless you have both segments of that bridge, in my opinion. The first one is, of course, the virtual sports. The second one is the number-based virtuals. And uh, I can see that correlation on all the sites that we are active right now. Uh, and the beauty of it is that uh, I guarantee you that the virtual sports, the virtual sports cannot uh, outperform uh, number-based virtual games in the retail. So once all of this is over, hopefully, you know, we're not looking at months, we're looking at weeks, uh, you can actually transfer that product from the online into the retail practically seamlessly. And you can have the same players or even broaden the scope of players in the shops as well. Uh, and I think that's the beauty of, of these uh, virtual games. Uh, and I think it goes, it speaks well beyond any kind of market that we can focus on. It, it's actually pretty global. We've seen this traction in Africa, we've seen it in Latam, we've seen it in Europe, and now we're seeing it in Asia as well. So I, I think there's, you know, uh, the, the nature of people and, and their, you know, uh, their kind of um, like effectiveness to numbers is something that's really very, very universal, I would say. Okay, so in the meantime, we received some questions from the audience, but at first I would like to ask you, uh, I, I don't think that in the next three months, classic sports will be back. So <laughs> anybody that says that during the summer, we will be back with the classic sports and everything is, I think, should think about it again, because when we see the news that they are saying that large gatherings will remain in lockdown till maybe August in Germany, uh, on other countries, even for September, I think that sports betting will be back in December or maybe next year. So virtual sports, virtual games have now a chance to prove themselves. So, uh, you said that you have many uh, virtuals. Uh, which are the most popular virtuals at Ansoft in retail? Okay, just to uh, you know, come up to your question, I think you're uh, very, very correct. And I think the reason why that is, is that uh, a lot of people are very optimistic because they're hearing uh, good news or like optimistic news from major football leagues in Europe. Uh, the top five leagues, which are in essence, you know, driving most of the traffic for most of the operators. But when you look at the complete offering, and we're talking about 20, 30,000 matches per month uh, that are offered, let's say, in in-play betting that, you know, Ensof provides for in our solution, uh, that amount of matches is not going to come back to normal, maybe even not until December. Uh, there's going to be a lot of leagues that are, have been canceled, postponed, a lot of competitions that will never rise up again. Uh, because I'm not worried about Premiership and Serie A and Primera. I'm sure that they will get through this. But, you know, the Table Tennis League 2 in Belarus or, you know, uh, I don't know, Badminton Third League in China. I mean, it's not that big of a competition to withstand such a blow. And, you know, the offering of sports is going to be tremendously different than it was before. I think it's going to change uh, a lot within the industry. So uh, basically, but then again, like this is why the reason why I'm carrying this T-shirt is the mm -hmm. moment of, of uh, Liverpool versus Barca. I'm sure that it's going to come back, and I'm sure that you know the situation is going to go back to normal soon. But um, you know, you just have to have hope, and we have to you know keep our ears to the ground. But uh, in terms of the virtuals, uh, the, the question that you post, posted uh, for Nsoft, the most uh, interesting. Uh, Products, I mean, it depends widely about the region, but uh, glo globally speaking, our most important and most uh, attractive virtual games are Lucky Six and uh, pre-recorded Greyhound races, um, followed by, uh, let's say, virtual horse races, virtual Greyhound races, uh, Lucky X, uh, Roulette, Keno, uh, and all the other virtual games. So basically, if you have to pick two, those would be Lucky Six and Greyhound races. But the beauty of the online is that you know you can have all of them and just you know see which ones the players like most and this is how most of our partners are basically approaching this um, of course there are jurisdictions where you cannot actually have virtual game number based virtual games uh, online 
uh, due to regulation, uh, because in some of the countries, especially in Europe, the national lotteries are usually the ones that are, you know, let's say Italy is a good example where nobody except Lotomatica can actually have these number-based uh, games, no matter if they're virtual or, or actually, uh, you know, real events. Um, and this, of course, poses a big problem, but that's why we have uh, our other virtual sports that can actually fit, fit the need. Okay, so before I go to my next question, we said that this would be interactive, so I'm going to take a question from the, from the attendance. Uh, there's a question from an anonymous uh, person who asked if the products are certified, Mm -hmm. And also, uh, what kind of setup would you advise to a new operator setting up the business in retail once the crisis is over in Eastern Europe? Mm -hmm. And how to engage players? What do they like? The shop setup, TV, etc. Okay, those are like 10 questions, but <laughs> let me go into it. So basically... Um... Certification first. Certification, it depends from market to market. We have been working with BMM, uh, GLI, uh, SIQ, uh, GA, there's been like iTech Labs, there's been so many uh, organizations or laboratories that we've been working with, depending on the uh, jurisdiction. We have now, I think, certified games for about 30 different markets, uh, and some of them don't require any certification. So basically, uh, it depends heavily from market to market. Now, if we're talking about uh, Balkans area and Eastern Europe, I think most of the uh, countries we have covered with certification where we can actually certify our games. I'm talking about countries that are prohibiting virtuals altogether. Macedonia is a good example where they actually um, centralized the virtual games to only the national lottery. But now in, in the light of these corona events, they actually you know, allowed all the operators to have virtuals as well. Because imagine having your, you know, betting operator where you can only offer betting on sports. So these last month, more than a month, has been painstaking because there's no offer. You can do any offering on the pre-match, on the live as well. So it's, you know, that end stream. So uh, virtuals are getting back even to the regions that or markets that we thought it's never going to go back to. Uh, and basically for us, uh, we have our in-house legal department that takes care of uh, legal and compliance department that takes care of all the compliance in all the markets. Uh, and if we do not have the certification for a certain market, we will most definitely uh, be providing the certificates before we launch live. And now in terms of starting up the operation, I think honestly that, you know, this is an opportunity for a lot of uh, new entrants to the market. Um, there are markets in, in Europe that are, I think Romania is a good example, where you have a lot of operators, like a big number of operators, because the, the regulation has been so good. The, the, the um, regulator has done a very good job in setting the tax rates, in setting the tax system, in allowing everybody to participate in like legal um, competition, I would say. Uh, and everybody who's working in Romania it, it's, it pays off to be, you know, completely white because in most of the markets, why you have a lot of underground and a lot of black market is because either uh, it's prohibited completely or basically it's regulated poorly. I think Romania has been doing a good job. You can see it by the number of operators. But I think this crisis is going to wipe out a lot of them. Um, and I think it's an opportunity for, you know, new entrants to the market or a big opportunity for, you know, the big guys out there to just, you know, eat the smaller fish, so to say. Uh, and my recommendation for anybody, you know, entering retail after all of this is done is, first off, diversify your offer. You cannot obviously depend only on sports. Uh, I would say that you cannot, you know, uh, be relying only on slots as well. Because who knows, maybe the whole slot industry is going to go on collective strike, you know, in 2021. Um, and basically, uh, this is why a good mixture is having the sports book and having the virtuals as well in the shop. And uh, one more important thing is basically uh, rely on SSBTs. We have seen tremendous numbers uh, with a lot of different operators that have their physical presence with their physical shops. Uh, and they have been performing exceptionally. Uh, there are two, let's say, 
roughly two models that you can work your shops around. First one is like sports bar model where you have big space, uh, you know, definitely about 200 square meters with like uh, segments for watching the game, segments for casino slots, all these different kind of entertainment areas. And of course the sports betting part, uh, those shops profit from the SSBTs, I would say the most. But even the shops that are really, uh, and we have markets where you know the standard for a retail shop is, uh, you know, 20, 30 square meters. You go in, you have the offer on the walls, you have the TVs with some rituals and and some live offering, and that's it. Only a couple of tables, and not, the only thing you can do is bet. You cannot order a coffee, you cannot watch a game, uh, profoundly. So it's basically different kind of approaches. For me, I think the first one is much better because you give, you know. A lot more content to the people and people like to spend time there more uh which makes them you know uh, more better guests i would say and again uh first advice is diversify your offer have virtuals definitely in the mix if your market allows them the second one uh invest in ssbts honestly it doesn't even have to be you know i'm not pitching this it's just a same reason because the return on investment on these devices is brilliant uh, they can uh, actually, <laughs> well, a funny story is that a couple of our partners that are using SSBTs right now have been, um, one of their biggest fears was how the elderly elderly uh, customers of theirs are going to react to, you know, machines taking in their money and, you know, printing out their tickets. So basically, this was the majority of their fears. They said, like, the average age is really high in the retail most of our, you know, younger clients are online, uh, and we're not worried about them because, you know, they can use a machine to place a bet. But we're worried about, you know, the guys that are, you know, sixty plus. Funny enough, the adoption rate was tremendous in the elderly uh, segment of their customers. So basically, most of the SSBTs in their shops are being occupied by the elderly people, and they have gotten used to the machines very quickly. Uh, and basically, the, it, it has unclogged their uh, cashiers, which means that they can accept more bets without actually employing more people. And this is, I think, the whole essence of SSBTs, and it definitely needs to be, you know, in the mix of any retail shop that you plan to open. Oh, so you, you answered my next question, which was <laughs> about SSBTs, if they are a good channel for distribution of virtual. So you already answered this question. So I will go to my next question is like uh, about which operators are the best fit for number based virtuals because you explain number based virtuals uh, at the beginning and uh, I was just wondering which are the operators that could use this type of game. Well, I think it's basically pretty much everybody who has that kind of need to consolidate the sportsbook part and the casino part that's for one which means pretty much everybody out there but if you look at it from a, a more distant kind of view i would say that um especially in the markets uh, where where you have a monopoly over any kind of number of game, um where you know the national lottery is the one doing these games uh there is a strong need for adopting the classical lottery games to the newer age and it has been progressing very slowly to you know to be put to put it mildly uh basically the demographics of the people who are you know uh, participating in classic lottery games uh has been devastating and i think you know every major lottery out there has seen this uh and has started thinking about this and how to solve this and i can say with 100 percent certainty simply that lucky six is part of that solution uh, we offer a game that's uh, being run every five, maybe even up to two minutes, uh, that can provide your player a chance to bet on a number, bet on six numbers, bet on a color, bet on a group. So it's basically an interactive game that you don't have to wait for a week to, to, to get your results. And in this day and age, even five minutes is too long for an online player to wait to you know get their ticket resolved. You go... Yeah. You pay it in, you want to resolve immediately. This is why we launched Next6 uh, a few years back, which is a uh, you know, online-based solution where you're betting on the next ball. What's the next ball going to be? 
uh, or the next two balls. And that's basically it. You, you jump in, you place the bet, and you go out. The, the span of, of, of a player is like 15 seconds, uh, and you are forcing them to wait for, you know, days uh, to get, you know, the result for, for, their, for their bet. It's not good, and this is why we have been working tremendously with a lot of lotteries out there. We're working with the National Lottery of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We're looking, working with lotteries, uh, basically in Slovenia, in Croatia, and all these different parts. And we have seen this kind of switch into this segment, and I'm sure that there's going to be more to come uh, because this number-based virtuals products fit beautifully into this concept of you know having a national a body for uh, performing these number-based uh, betting games. Okay, good. So the next question I will take from the audience. So okay. Anna has a question about uh, if you believe that the lockdown will change the behavior of the punters even after lockdown, meaning that will they remain online more than compared to retail after this mm -hmm. is over? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I hope that it will be over sometime because we are going crazy over here. <laughs> okay, yeah, so what, what's your opinion on this? Okay, uh, I mean, basically, uh, I think that uh, I really strongly believe that retail is here to stay for a long time. Uh, I don't think it's going to wipe out the retail because I think the socio-economic kind of effect of having a retail shop actually makes sense. And it's not only the older generation, like you know, most of us think that you know only the older generations are visiting the shops. No, it's like across different uh, age groups, and I think it needs to stay there. It needs to be part of the community because you know everybody, every one of us has our own kind of small neighborhood, and you probably know your regular neighborhood, you know, uh, bakery, regular neighborhood grocery store. Uh, in a lot of countries where everything's regulated in terms of the retail betting, you have your you know regular neighborhood betting shop as well. Otherwise, you have somebody your regular illegal bookie. <laughs> yeah, or exactly. Yeah, the the, the neighbor upstairs that's taking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but no, I mean basically it, it needs to I think stay because it's just a you know a natural kind of uh, instinct for people, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But the effect is going to definitely be there. Uh, it's going to be there because there's a lot of uh, betting shops that don't have any other content but sports betting. And as you said, for the months to come, it's not going to go up, come to the same stage uh, because you're not going to be you're not going to have anything to bet on. And I think the you know behavior of players is already you know moving into the online because more and more of their money is being you know deposited on their accounts and they can play from the comfort of their home. But I think as soon as you know the lockdown is over, we will see a, a big impulse uh, from the retail because people, you know, the same way we miss, you know, hanging out with our friends or drinking a beer, or you know, in, in a pub, it's pretty much the same effect on, on in, in the betting shops. You miss having, and, and I'm sure when the lockdown ends in Romania, you know, you're gonna find a chance to go out and have a beer. With, with your friends and you know there's nothing going to, nothing's going to stop you and you can you would probably see all the pubs that are filled with people and the initial kind of uh thrill is going to be there for a couple of weeks i'm sure because people are going to be spending like crazy whatever they have left after this uh on these kind of events and, and social gatherings that they haven't had a chance to do before yeah there's uh, some bad news about this beer that i read online that uh, during the lockdown, some beer are going to lose their sizzle and bubble, so <laughs> maybe we won't have any beer to drink. So, <laughs> moving on to my next question is would be that uh, can you tell me a good example of uh, vetting operators who are incentivizing their shop clerks to sell more virtuals versus classic games? I mean, oh. it's in terms of in the past because. <laughs> yeah, no we cannot talk about. <laughs> yeah, no love selling of retail tickets nowadays. Uh, no, I mean uh, I, it's a, it's a it's a good question, and I think it comes down to you know the strategy that you uh, take as a, as an operator. I've seen models that are very very ambitious that are trying to you know get the players in. I've seen you know different approaches from operators, like uh, in terms of how they set up their retail business. Like most of them like to go into at some stage, they like to go into this franchise uh, system where they're actually 
you know, spreading the brand through, through our franchise system. And I've seen on the same market uh, operators that don't want to do that, that are, you know, renting out or buying out their own uh, retail spots. Uh, and it needs to be everything within their kind of, you know, four walls, I would say. Uh, but uh, basically, I think that um, uh, a lot of a lot of operators are going to be, you know, either struggling a bit or, or, or basically moving on into the, you know, next kind of phase slowly. And I think, you know, the numbers are going to be the right I would say indication, indication on how, th how things are basically uh, developing. And I think, you know, out of these incentives that are used, uh, maybe the best kind of example that I can point out is the most, you know, stupid one and simple one is, you know, give your clerks a uh, commission on the tickets. Because we've seen uh, a tremendous success where, you know, the owners have given like micro micro payments for each printed ticket of let's say lucky six or each printed ticket of greyhound races you wouldn't believe because uh, the, 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 the clerks in the shops have been earning more because they've been getting the up the clients to actually play these virtual games uh and it's a good model that's actually providing good statistics good numbers and it actually makes sense because there is no way for a clerk inside of a betting shop, you know, serving people uh, that can, you know, he cannot really improve his or her salary that much unless they have this kind of, kind of a system. And by using this system, you can actually freely point them in the direction that you want. Okay, maybe next month I want to incentivize, you know, more pre-match betting, then, you know, give them a stronger incentive for, for pre-match tickets and, and, you know, use that simple measure to actually, you know, get numbers uh, much higher than they were before. So, uh, you know, there's been a lot of excitement three weeks ago, four weeks ago when the lockdown started and everything. So mm -hmm. everybody was switching to virtual sports. And even we saw a lot of press releases that we published about this or that operator going live with virtual sports. But somehow in the past few days, even a week, we saw that this has set a bit. So do you think that all this excitement about virtuals is settling down and now people are taking it as a normal way of betting? Yeah, I mean, I think basically it depends from which perspective you're looking at. <laughs> because I think the online, the players uh, that uh, you know usually bet have transitioned onto the virtual games instantly. I think that that was it's everything I, I kind of view everything as like the, the balance of demand and supply and i think the effect of uh, not having enough supply in sports uh, around the world made the punters move into virtual sports and in effect like uh, basically a reaction to that was all the operators went berserk on trying to get as much virtuals as possible onto their site uh which we've seen as like a virtual games provider as well, but you know the likes of Sport Radar or Red Radar, Golden Race, Global Bet, uh, pretty much all the all the players out there have seen uh, Chiron inspired. Like all of them have been under this kind of effect, and I think that you know it's going to last for a lot longer because the operators that have um, moved to to get these this content on on their site, uh, a lot of these providers of virtual games are now you know deep in through their uh, integration uh, roadmaps, trying to accommodate all the interest that's coming up. But as all of us in the industry know, it's not really that straightforward. There's a lot of points that you have to pass and all of us have adapted to this situation. I can tell you from our experience that we have actually relocated some of our developers uh, from you know standard stuff uh, uh, onto these integrations because we've seen a lot of, uh, you know, demand for it and we wanted to accommodate to our clients and I think now more than ever we have been delivering to the spot uh, we have uh, the we have releases that are uh, within a few hours I, I, I kid you not that we have a couple of examples where we released a production environment game within a matter of uh, a couple of hours and this has not been done before because all, always there has been demand but not as much as this and we never had the manpower on this segment that we have now 
so basically, I think all the providers are reacting really good and are providing all the support that the operators need. But there's a lot of bottlenecks on, on, on the other side where you have, you have to go through regulation, you have to get the certificates, uh, you have to integrate you know, the games onto the site, you have to position them, you have to launch them, do proper marketing. So all this takes time. So I think the real effect of virtuals and performance of virtuals on, on global scale is going to take effect in like two or three weeks from now when a vast majority of operators have uh, enough virtual content to actually cater to, to, to the their players. And one more thing that I just want to, you know, point point out is that everybody's going to have virtuals on their site, you know, by in the next month or so, there's not going to be a single website out there that doesn't have, you know, at least a couple of virtual games. But you need to take in consideration how you place them. And you need to take in consideration what your provider is advising you to do. Because unless you do that, you're just, you know, wasting your resources and time and money onto a product that's not going to perform. I have seen our best products underperforming on sites because of placement of the game, because of, uh, you know, basically the banners that they put up, because of the explanation that they did. There's so many factors, especially in the online, on how to improve the traffic and how to get the players to be more interested in the game. Uh, so my advice to all the, you know, operators, betting operators out there, please, you know, work together with your providers for your virtual sports or your virtual number games because that's the you know the only the only positive way that you can you know take about otherwise you're just going to be spending time and resources without getting getting anything in return basically you need a provider with experience yeah and i think i think all the all the guys out there you know as far as i know uh, you know, all of them are very accommodating and they, they want to help and basically they have the knowledge that they like to share. And I'm sure that, you know, whoever you're working with right now, it's going to, you know, it's going to be able to, to, to help out in any way they, they can. Okay, so now I know I need a better webcam. <laughs> 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 so, Ivan, it's been nice talking to you. There are no more questions from the audience. I just send them your email address so every, everybody who wants to contact you, they can get in touch directly. Okay. Would you like to add something more to this or we can just say goodbye to everyone? Yeah, I think I think that's about it. I wasted quite a lot of your time anyways. So uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope some of it was useful to you and I hope some of you actually reach out. Uh, we'd be more, more than glad to, you know, to uh help out any way we can and i'm always glad to you know meet new people within the industry and you know, spread the network so take care stay home and hopefully you know everybody's going to have that chance to have a pint of beer even if it if it's like the one that's gone bad <laughs> it's still going to be a thrill so uh, take care and hope to see you on on the next virtual event out there yeah yeah, by the way, our next virtual event is on the 7th of May, where uh, Ivan is also joining a panel discussion about how these alternative uh, sports betting services, games are taking over. And there's going to be an interesting uh, discussion over there, too. In the meantime, you can subscribe to our channel and thank you for being with us. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.